Hello, good afternoon. This is NTA Nationwide. I'm Joseph Johnson. Thanks for joining us. Let's begin by telling you that two new ministers have been sworn in by Acting President Yemi Oshimbaju at the Federal Executive Council meeting this Wednesday. The new ministers are Stephen Ocheni from Okogi and Suleiman Hassan from Gombe State. They are to replace the two former ministers, Amina Mohammed of Minister of Environment, who is now the United Nations, and late James Ocholi of the Labour Ministry, who died in a motor accident last year. Acting President urged them to key into the Buhari administration and administration's agenda of transforming Nigeria to a greater nation. And we believe that uh, the, the, the primary the, the, the primary thing to do is for those of us who are serving, for those of us who have the privilege of service, to ensure that by our own conduct and by our own actions, we support the anti-corruption fight. And also that uh, our conduct itself is exemplary, so that we are, uh, we're, we're able to show by practice, uh, not just by words, that we are determined uh, to ensure that this country is one where there is good governance, and where there is honesty and integrity in service to the people. And Jide Onifada report that their portfolios are yet to be announced. To the legislature where the Senate has commenced the clause-by-clause -clause consideration of the report of the Committee on the 1999 Constitution Review using electronic voting. At the time of filing this report, some aspects like devolution of powers, financial autonomy for state legislatures, and uh, inclusion of ex-Senate presidents and ex-speakers in the composition of the Council of States received affirmative vote of state legislatures. This alteration seeks to provide for the funding of the assembly houses of the assembly of the states directly from the consolidated revenue fund of the state. Let's register now by pressing the green button. Okay, voting is over. The eyes have it. This is approved. Thank you. Meanwhile, the Nigeria Customs Service has submitted a budget proposal of 80.64 billion naira for 2017 Comptroller General Customs Service Hamid Ali announced this to the Senate Committee on Customs and Excise, chaired by Senator Hope Uzadima, National Assembly correspondent. Rabi Musa reports that the figure is lower than that of 2016. The Customs Comptroller General, Hamid Ali, told the Senate Committee on Customs and Excise that the drop in figure was due to drop in revenue generation. He said of the 2016 budget approval of 937 billion naira, only 772.74 billion naira was received. Our budget is dependent on what we collect. So if the trade volume is low, that our collection is low, and therefore it's the seven percent of what we collect that is given back to us. Our major challenges as of today is issue of smuggling. That we are designing measures to be able to fight this cause. Chairman, Senate Committee on Customs, Senator Hope Uzodima, and members ask questions on how the Comptroller General intend to improve on revenue generation and complete the 2016 projects as well as undertake new ones for 2017. So you do you want us to leave that office again to 2018? Yeah, Let's at least this year complete that building. The budget desk has to do some more work to indicate the projects that are ongoing and the, the projects that are new. And the ones that are ongoing, performance, uh, so, uh, the progress report or uh, progress status should be indicated. It will enable anybody to know the difference between one project and another project. The Nigerian Customs Service had a shortfall of 216.56 billion naira in her 2016 budget. Rabi Musa, NTA News. And the federal government has offset long-standing debts owed pensioners, contractors and oil marketers amounting to 2.7 trillion naira 
The Executive Secretary, Depot and Product Marketers Association stated this at an investigative hearing by the Senate Joint Committee on Petroleum Resources. National Assembly Correspondent Ivan Izumba reports. Recently, the National Assembly hearkened to the call of the petroleum marketers in the country to look into the financial challenges faced by them as a result of the huge and daily increase in debt owed the various banks from unpaid balances and subsidy. The executive secretary of the association, while appreciating the government, pleaded that the National Assembly hasten the consideration of the federal government supplementary appropriation bill to assure the banks of their sincerity to offset their loans. We have met with the Ministry of Finance, Petroleum, and the CBN governor. A meeting was summoned by the chief of staff to the president, and all issues were looked into and they have been resolved. This is why you voted us into office, to look into your grievances, to look into the grievances of ordinary Nigerians, and uh, to wade into them with a view to bringing about peace and uh, progress. In another development, Officials of the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission appeared before the Senate Committee on Power and Steel Development to provide details of the Commission's 2017 budget. The Vice Chairman said they plan to have forum offices in all states of the Federation. And all over the country. And when cases are escalated to the forum office for resolution, forum members actually sit and adjudicate. Now, we want to be able to have forum offices in all states of the Federation and in places like Ibadan, which is covering a much larger area. We will always see, like now, you say 30 million, so so and so million for training. And I've not seen anywhere you are inviting members of the parliament, your committee, to be part of that training. Also, officials of the National Agency for Food, Drugs, Administration and Control, NABDAC, appeared before the Senate Committee on Health to present their budget for 2017. The acting DG, Navdak, listed recommended drugs for the treatment of malaria. Senate and Amuda Queen, Artemita, Dufematrin, and Sofadoxine, Methadmin, which are also the WHO recommended combinations. The agency pleaded to carry out its functions effectively to protect the lives of Nigerians. From the National Assembly, Ifani Izumba. News. In the meantime, the House of Representatives Ad Hoc Committee on Power investigating the sale of power holding company of Nigeria non-core assets across the country postponed its sitting due to discrepancies in the submission by management of the Peristotles. National Assembly correspondent Rabi Musa has details. The House of Representatives Ad Hoc Committee on Power, chaired by Gaza Jonathan Gwefi, questioned the management of Bureau for Public Enterprises, BPA, former MDs of National Electricity Management Company, NEMCO, Federal Inland Revenue Service, Nigerian Institute of Estate Valuers, and some stakeholders involved in the transactions. The bidding process for the sale hasn't commenced yet. The issue of complaints about sale did not arise before the commencement of transfer to NEMCO. The transfer order transferred assets, obligations, employees, rights to four agencies of government, of which NEMCO is one. There were two parties that have said that we are sold pre-NEMCO suppressions, and those are the properties at uh, Ijora and one at uh, Sokoto. The Speaker of the House of Representatives, represented by Deputy Minority Leader, Chukuka Onyema mandated the committee to investigate the status and sale of the non-core assets. Ascertain the methodology that was for, value, for liquidation, whether such properties were well valued and ensure full compliance with the sale of properties. The committee members insisted that title documents since 1978 should be submitted before the 31st of July 2017 while oversight visits will be undertaken by the committee to the non-core assets of PHCN transferred to BPE and NEMCO across the country. So many revelations and we're going to continue building on this till we get to the root of the matter. Rabi Musa, NTA News.
Still talking legislative matters, the House of Representatives Committee on Emergency Preparedness and Disaster Management is asking the Director General of NEMA, Mustafa Mehaja, to appear before it on Thursday. The chairman of the committee, Representative Jibrin Satumari, explained that the invitation is for the NEMA DG to account for the 13 billion Naira ecological fund released to him. We invited him is to discuss the main issue, the utilization of these ecological funds, intervention funds, and flood in the northeast. And for him to explain how he, he spent and utilized all those funds. However, the Director General of NEMA says he was only appointed in April and could not have received that much from the Ecological Fund. There are two major sources of, of uh, funding uh, activities. One is appropriation in the budget. Secondly, Ecological Fund. Uh, what was approved in the budget is 1.3 billion, out of which 700 plus million uh, is for salaries. The only money approved in the budget for other activities is 506 million. Furthermore, the ecological plan, which is average of 550 million monthly, we got for April and May, which, around, which is amount about 1.1 billion. So I, one could not imagine how I could get uh, uh, 13 billion naira to Sukanda. On the issue of earlier invitations, he explained that he was away on official assignment and this was communicated to the committee. The committee in total requested to see us three times. The first time we moved, we, we set out to go when the chairman of the committee appeared that he is not aware of this invitation and we must not go. Being the chairman of the committee, we decided to stay back and requested for another day, which he gave, and all the committee members invited us two weeks later. We sat with them. They told us their requirement. We submitted some of their requirements, awaiting to submit the second one. When they, they, they now wrote to invite us for a meeting on Tuesday, that is yesterday. Unfortunately, uh, the whole world can attest to the fact that I was in Banki, I was in Burma, I was also in Gulumbagana and uh, other smaller towns around Burma to inspect the food distribution and pre uh, preparation by government to instead civil authority uh, in the state. When they wrote, I was not away. The, 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 the agency wrote to them that I was not away and I, I could not be reached because there is no communication in Burma as it is now. The Director General added that the agency relies on a federal government emergency fund to deal with the crisis in the Northeast. In another front, Governor Darius Dixon Ishaku has signed into law the Taraba State Open Grazing Prohibition and Ranches Establishment Bill passed by the State House of Assembly. Joseph Orton reports that the governor who gave a six-month grace for the implementation says the law will enhance food production in the state. The Taraba State Open Grazing Prohibition and Ranches Establishment Act, signed by Governor Darius Dixon Ishako, specify areas of operation for cattle rearers and crop farmers. Governor Ishako says there will be a six-month transition period for open grazing. During the period, a sensitization committee will be set up to educate farmers and herdsmen on how best to make profit from the development. Pilot ranches will be established by government in the three sanitarium zones of the state as a reference centers where farmers will be organized to cultivate special grass that will be sold as feed to cattlemen in their ranches. By these measures, cattle rearing will soon be a universal business. This law the state government believes will help curtail the senseless killing of innocent lives and destruction of property and settlement. Cop cattle wrestling as strangers with sophisticated weapons disguising themselves as hessmen will be easily identified by security agencies. The governor called on all to take the act in good faith 
as government is desirous to protect the lives of all the citizens. In Jalingo, Joseph Sound Otsen, NTA News. Now let's take a look at some of the other stories making news today. There are calls for intensified synergy in closing scientific and technological gaps in Nigeria for industrialization and global competitiveness. This was the standpoint of discussions on NTS Current Affairs program Tuesday Live. Talat Terezeriki reports. Science and technology identified as a tool to nation's advancement is not new to Nigeria. At the primary school level are subjects like basic science and technology. In the secondary school, physics, chemistry and biology that has resulted in scientific and technological breakthroughs. I see that Nigeria making cars that do not use fuel and flying cars. A research work from University of Jos has made it possible for us to have anti-snake venom from plants. There are, however, gaps which many believe can be addressed through scaling up funding research and development activities, protection of intellectual property rights, and effective linkage between research organizations and industries. Industries must be ready to come out and tell or challenge universities, this is what we want you to produce for us, then conduct research, fund it. Normally, those technology and, and softwares are both in a lump sum, you, you, it's a one of payment. We insist that 40% of that amount of money must go to the Nigerian farm to give them financial models. For others, they need to pay more attention to indigenous technology. We must move away from this issue of going abroad to do researches and then bringing them back here for use. Our institution should be able to do clear research and come up with quality products to ensure that standards are entrenched and the products produced in the technology incubation centers serve as feeders to the larger industry. It is widely heard that Nigeria stands to gain so much from advanced scientific and technological drive to grow the nation's gross domestic product GDP. Talati Ezeriki, NTA News. The monumental task there, Talatu Ezeriki. Thank you. Now let's uh, go to Lagos. It is our first port of call on Nationwide as we join Jennifer for more stories from that end. Jennifer, how is the Center of Excellence today? Thank you, Joseph. Good evening and a warm welcome to Lagos. 15 people have been rescued and eight confirmed dead following rescue operation, rescue operation at the scene of a four-story building which collapsed on Tuesday afternoon on Massa Street in Lagos Island. Musa Toliat has a situation report. Eyewitnesses say the building had shown some signs of weaknesses and structural defects which necessitated renovative work by its owners. They however said efforts to install some telecommunication equipment on the building led to the unfortunate incident. Not for the fact that a mast was erected on that house two weeks ago. The house wouldn't have collapsed the way it did. I fought the agents when they want to man the mats. Those who wondered why the Lagos State Building Control Agency did not take measures to seal up the building, having certified that it was not fit for habitation. Two books on the importance and quality of good governance, improved high-quality education to African development, and preferring effective remedies to socio-economic challenges have been presented to the public in Lagos. Abolore Ogbara reports that the two books, A Journey in African Development and Transformative Paradigms in African Development, was written by B.C. Ogunjobi. Thank you very much. Please give him a round of applause. The 208-page book on a journey in African development and the 240-page book on transformative paradigms in African development were published to set the record straight on the need for all to engage in healthy reading. We want to know why the Afri um, Federal Mortgage Bank is not being able to tackle the magnitude of 
housing problem we have in Nigeria. It's a very inspiring and powerful book, and uh, I personally highly recommend it. Keynote speaker Dr. Akiwumi Adeshino said the validity of the books stems from the lack of diversification of the African economies. Very rich with vision. It's very rich with practical guidance. It's also very rich with inspiration for the young generation. Those who are in authority were there to read some of it and implement some of the recommendations would become part of this special team of people working for a better Nigeria. Development is basically about gov governance. How you manage resources, human and material, for the improvement of the life of the citizenry. Guests at the event opine that political stability is essential for economic reforms and development, which in turn will have major impact on the welfare of its citizenry. In Lagos, Abolore Obara, NT News. The Lagos State Government has restated its commitments to the success of the development agenda for the West for the Western Nigerian Commission, a body comprising of all southwestern states. Governor Akiwumi Ambodi made the pledge during a public lecture organized by the Lagos State Public Service in Ikeja. Nosa Osula reports. According to the governor, the development agenda for the Western Nigeria Commission, DON, and other similar platforms entails collaborative development plans for regional economic integration, which will help minimize some of the current challenges being faced by states in the Western region, such as high migration, infrastructural deficits and traffic congestion. We must be more strategic, innovative and long-term in our thinking and planning. We must deliberately and actively fully enhance our comparative advantages as well as develop and implement viable reforms that will ensure that the future of our destiny will be even more prosperous than it is today. Ambody also added that the state government is committed to diversifying the state's economy by always striving to improve the ease of doing business in the state through the Office of Transformation and Innovation. This will go a long way in reducing the cost of doing business, as well as improving the living conditions of the people in the state. Our smart city initiative will help to ensure that the state is cleaner, is safer, and productive, and then more resilient. They're also making it more attractive for foreign direct investments. The governor disclosed that his administration has embarked on a power reform aimed at generating captive power within the next few years for the benefit of residents. In Lagos, Nosa, Osula, NTA News. You're still watching NTA Nationwide News. Back to Joseph in Abuja for more. Joseph, over to you. Jennifer from our Lagos Network Center there. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed has challenged information officers to see their mandate as one that must propagate government activities and build confidence in the people about programs and policies of government. The minister stated this at the opening of a capacity building workshop for strategic communication liaison officers in Abuja. Anthony Fawson reports. A workshop organized by the Office of the National Security Advisor is taking a look at mainstreaming strategic communications across government to ensure national security. With the present security threats Nigeria is facing, the workshop Information and Culture Minister says wouldn't have come at a better time than now. Promote the culture of the people and government of Nigeria through a dynamic public information system that facilitates access by the citizens and the global community to credible and timely information about our nation. With present-day technological advances, which has in turn redefined the media landscape, information officers must brace up to contemporary practice which will break the myth around the much acceptability of the social media, which has become the platform for disseminating fake news and propaganda in the smearing government. The social media is a double-edged sword. Whereas it allows them to reach their audiences much faster, it also poses a lot of challenges, in particular because social media is blurring the line between fact and fiction. 
The National Security Advisor was represented by Ambassador Amin Negebu. He said the workshop is strategic given the fact that combating security threats such as terrorism is highly sophisticated. Therefore, the role of information officers in this regard must be commensurate with the expectations from them. He pointed out that even the terrorists have a high media capacity, hence the media patronage they enjoy. It is therefore the business of you all to, uh, to bring up strategic communication to counter these messages, which is why when streaming it has become a priority. Ending terrorism in Nigeria requires collective efforts from the society, and communication is one of the main keys to ending the fight against terrorists. The United Kingdom is deploying the sum of 35 million pounds through the Office of the National Security Advisor to support the execution of programs that will help victims of terrorist activities live normal lives in Nigeria. In Abuja, Anthony Forson, NTA News. Now, the need to uphold ethics, transparency and integrity in the administration of public service examinations formed the core of discourse at the National Conference on Mainstreaming Best Practices in Nigeria's Public Service. Chukunon Somabweze reports. It is the assumption of many that the public service in Nigeria is an all-commerce affair, devoid of qualified and competent personnel. Concerned by this perception, these bureaucrats converged on Abuja, the nation's capital, at the instance of Exam Ethics Marshals International, to brainstorm more ways of making the public service more viable and competitive in line with global best practices. Without good exam ethics, you can't produce good leaders. And from the analysis that has been carried out in this country, Nigeria is where it is because of failed leadership. The strength of our procedures may also in a way be a source of weakness. It is rigorous, it, it, it is so much, and most of it is done manually. I think in this era of ICT, a, a little involvement of uh, computer-based tests somehow will reduce the cost, will hasten the process. Some of the participants speak on their take-home from the conference. We've learned quite a lot and we're going to put more, more proactive this time around and put more process in place that will make us to have our exams hit free. If you are teaching children and you teach them a lot of ethics concerning exam and practice, they start learning from there and as they grow up and graduate, they remember when their teachers told them this thing is wrong, you don't have to cheat to get to the top. The four-day conference has the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, as one of its major partners. In Abuja, Chukunon Songwa Bweze. NTN News. Just time to remind you that you can watch this news live online via the NTN mobile app, which you can download on your Android device at the Google Play Store or at the Apple Store if you use devices with iOS. Time to take a break to bring you some messages. The news continues in just a moment. Stay with us. Change does not just happen. You and I and all of us must appreciate that we all have our part to play if we want to bring change about. We must change our lawless habits, our attitude to public office and public trust. We must change our unruly behavior in schools, Hospitals, marketplaces, motor parks, on the roads, in homes and offices. To bring about change, we must change ourselves by being low abiding students. His Royal Highness, the Emir of Fika and Chairman, Yoba State Council of Chiefs, and Haji Muhammadu Abali Ibn Muhammadu Idrisa, cordially invites the general public to the 314 million naira appeal fund for the restructuring, remodeling, and expansion of Potiskum Central Mosque. Date Saturday, July 29, 2017. Venue Emir of Fika's Palace, Potiskum. Time 10 a.m. Special guest of honor, His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Yoba State, Al Haji Ibrahim Gaidam. Guest of honor, Al Haji Muhammadu Umaru Jibrila Bindo. 
Barista Muhammadu Abdullahi Abu Bakar, Alhaji Kashim Shatima, Alhaji Ibrahim Hassan Dankwambo, Architect Darius Dixon Ishaku, Chief Host Alhaji Muhammadu Abali Ibn Muhammadu Idrisa, Emir of Fika, Royal Father of the Day, His Eminence Alhaji Muhammad Saad Abu Bakar the Third. Chief Lodger, Alhaji Aliko Dangote, Chairman of the Occasion, Malam Adamu Chiroma, Mada Kinfika, Guest Speakers, Sheikh Tijani Bala Kalara Wikano, Sheikh Muhammad Kabiru Haruna Gombe, Announcer, Chairman, Organizing Committee, Alhaji Baba Baba, Damasan Fika. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Many Nigerian children cannot afford to go to school because they live in poverty. Instead of enjoying education and its benefits, they get involved in street trading to help themselves and their families survive. The Rochester Foundation is a humanitarian organization which currently caters for over 15,000 less privileged children in various schools all over Nigeria. The foundation has a goal to take thousands of less privileged children off the streets and provide them with free quality education from secondary school to the university as part of her Vision 2030. Admission forms are free and available online and at all Rochester Foundation Colleges at Oweri, Jos, Ibadan, Kano, Enugu, Sokoto, Yola, Bauchi, Zaria and Oboko. For further details visit www.rochesfoundation.org. Rochester Foundation, we educate to empower. Now, you can hold that dream occasion without stress. Horizon Caterers will provide answers to all your kitchen questions. Exquisite hall designs, mouth-watering and nourishing local and continental cuisine, suitable for all types of ceremonies, including weddings, AGMs, business luncheon, cocktails. Name it, we can bring it. Our chefs and executive waiters give your guests that unforgettable experience in service. Our service covers all states of the Federation. Call us today to book your locations. 0805-502-9637-0803-450-9726-0909-9708-111. Horizon Caterers. Experience catering beyond the horizon. Baby, baby, please now. Eh? School days are not for marrying. Marrying on campus in a marriage that is not a marriage. Is she married? Which marriage? An ill-timed union that breeds domestic violence, use, distractions, and heartbreak. And if she graduates and leaves me here, I will take another wife. You're what my father would call a rolling stone shiradigan. Do not show the responsibilities of married life before it is time. <laughs> Professor John Bull, Episode 2, Season 4, Campus Marriage. Wait a this now. Eh? Now you need to choose your destiny. Oh, yeah, bring two. Which one? That one like uh, your gaki leg and that one like uh, Udo's forehead. Over and out. Brought to you by GLOW. The largest data network. GLOW. Unlimited. Nationwide with me, Joseph Johnson. 
We now take you to Port Harcourt Center for an update on floods and other top stories from that zone. Furo is on standby. Furo, what's the latest? Thank you, Joseph. Well, we have a report that the torrential downpour experience in River State has resulted in the flooding of many communities in Port Harcourt and Obiaco local government areas and sacked many residents from their homes with massive loss of property. Karina Igonikon has an update. Some of the areas was hit by flood, apart from the premises of the Federal Road Safety Corps and Abar Road include NT Apara Link Road, Rumalogo, D-Line and Elekaya. Since day before yesterday, the rain, all our houses are full of water. Properties damaged, we don't even bring out to pin. There is no drainage in rivers to most of the places. And another thing I find out is that rivers people are fond of selling both water uh, way, and they will sell it in the dry season. Innocent people will come and buy and suffer with their family. Indiscriminate dumping of refuse into drains and building on natural waterways are some causative factors of the flood. As some communities are engaging self-help measures to check the flood, the River State Waste Management Agency is enjoining other residents to take responsibility to clean up their drains. And we are calling on individuals and corporate bodies to, to clean up the environment, clean up the drains, so that we can have easy flow. We are making arrangements right now to go and bring swamp boogie that will move in here tonight against tomorrow to dredge it. But we need government to come in immediately and set up a task force that will make sure they stop the dumping of the refuse in, in the canals. The agency recently sacked the silting contractors for failing to desilt drains across the city, which contributed to the present emergency and are in the process of appointing new ones. In Port Harcourt, Karina Igunikon, NTA News. The Nigeria Customs Port Harcourt area to command on air has seized 11 containers of illegally imported pharmaceuticals products and two containers suspected of containing contaminated fish. Comptroller Customs Port Harcourt area to command on air. Abu Bakr Bashir disclosed this at a press conference on the activities of the command between January to June 2017 at the Customs Conference Room on air. Diana Kume Ululu completes the story. The controller, Customs Port Harcourt Area 2 Command, Abubakar Basha, said that the command in its anti-smuggling responsibilities has made 20 seizures, which includes 18 by 20 containers and 2 by 40 containers carrying various items. I've just seized these two containers barely a week now. The owners of the container decided to use a different name in order to convince the customs. Also, in January, the command made seizures of 11 containers of illegally imported pharmaceuticals, which have since been handed over to NAVDAC for evacuation and destruction. From Onair Customs Area 2 Command, Yanukume Ulolo, NTA News. As the slogan of the station goes, NTA Port Harcourt setting the pace all is set to reposition and rebrand the station for effective, efficient, and dynamic operations. Today, Bero Onya reports that the new Oyeleye Zonal Director, Ntia Port Harcourt, is the initiator of this noble project. Known for its quality news and programs, transmitted via very high frequency, VHF Band 3, Ntia Port Harcourt has consistently remained afloat as an effective medium for information education and entertainment. To further project the station as an offshoot of the largest television network in Africa, the management of NTA Network Center for Tarkot, led by Nii Oyeleye, has concluded all arrangements for the rebranding of the center. The rebranding efforts of the NTA Network Center for Tarkot management is a clear demonstration of repositioning the station on the right footing. Everybody has to be very professional right now. Everybody should look at this issue of service delivery as, as very key. Because uh, gone are the days when you can just sit down and allow competitors to take over the markets. So we believe that we have to do something really to really ensure that uh, our people in River City really, really we have to provide them with essential service, which I think we have been noted for. For other staff of the organization, 
They are optimistic that the rebranded NTA Portacot will enhance productivity and clientele satisfaction. From the rebranded NTA Network Center Portacot, Julia Berry on here, NTA News. Well, that's our package and rebranding NTA Portacot Station. Back to Joseph. Good afternoon. Few, thank you very much indeed. Indeed, NTA is setting the pace. As Nigerians continue to make progress in the use of in vitro fertilization technology in reproductive health, professionals are calling for proper regulation and adherence to safety standards. Vice President of the Association for Fertility and Reproductive Health in Nigeria, Dr. Ibrahim Wada, was among guests who analyzed IVF technology 39 years since its introduction on Good Morning Nigeria. Joy Uzo reports. 39 years after the first birth by in vitro fertilization was recorded, many countries, including Nigeria, have taken advantage of the technology to assist people have children. With over 4,000 babies said to have been born in Nigeria through IVF, the issues of cost, awareness, stigma, exploitation, and ethics remain paramount. One of Nigeria's leading IVF specialists, Dr. Ibrahim Wada, says a lot needs to be done to improve awareness and access. The major effort we've made as practitioners, originals if you like, is coming together as a body to work with all arms of government. The executive, because they have the power to regulate, the legislator, the legislature, who will, you know, Put, it, put through the bill, working with passion to see that practice of IVF mm. or assisted reproduction is, is regulated properly. Another IVF doctor, Kenneth Eguda, who is reputed to have assisted the oldest IVF client deliver at 63 in Jos, says the nation needs to train more hands and eliminate any misgivings surrounding the practice. The first baby uh, de delivered by IVF in Jos should be about uh, three and a half years to four years now. And uh, recently, a feat was achieved in Jos at the Guineville Specialist Hospital, uh, where I personally work. That we have the, a 63-year-old woman conceived by IVF after the fourth attempt. The guest also noted that in as much as in vitro fertilization is growing in Nigeria, not everyone actually needs it. Hence, the need for Nigerians to seek proper medical advice in order to avoid exploitation. In Abuja, Joy Uzo, NTA News. Shu of Barunu summons traditional rulers for security meeting. These and more as we join Lami in Maiduguri. Hello, Lami. Joseph, you're welcome to May Degree. Federal Ministry of Science and Technology is the key into the rehabilitation and resettlement process in the Northeast. Minister of Science and Technology, Dr. Bunna Onu, made this known when he visited Governor Kashim Shetima at the Government House May Degree as part of his official visit to the state. Mohamed Guni reports. Dr. Obonaya Onu said he was in Borno on a fact finding mission because his ministry is interested in playing an important role in the rehabilitation process and finding solutions to the numerous challenges caused by the insurgency. We can give skills to our people here. Uh, so the, the MBTI is very relevant here. Uh, few, uh, but until I get back and get this report. The minister added that there are 17 agencies under the ministry and that some of them have offices in the state, assuring that more agencies will register their presence in Borno to provide succor to the victims of insurgency. Governor Kashim Shetima described the minister as internationally respected intellectual who has given Ministry of Science and Technology a new lease of life. Luckily, we are a nation endowed both in human and material resources. Unfortunately, the missing link when others are fighting natural disasters, we are fighting human catastrophe, human leadership deficiency. The governor said if the nation will make conscious effort to invest in science and technology, the country will have a greater hope for the future and assured of partnership with the ministry to provide solutions to challenges confronting the state and the nation as a whole. In Maiduguri,
Following the spate of suicide attacks and other security challenges with Devlin Bruno State, the Emirates Council has held a meeting with the 16 local government chairmen with a view to proffer solutions. Yagum Subukar has the details. The meeting which became imperative was summoned by the show of Borno. Abu Bakr ibn Umar Galbe al Kenemi in accordance with the power bestowed on him by the local government law to deliberate on issues affecting the state. Issues discussed during the meeting include proliferation of Jumad and Eid mocks where it was agreed to check make activities of preachers. It also agreed to scrutinize the activities of all NGOs in the state among other issues, hence the need for the Emirate Council to liaise with government to actualize this. The Shehu directed district and village heads to intensify awareness campaign on the importance of education as well as local government chairmen to sponsor people, especially youths, further their education. On the issue of Medugri Central Mocks, it was agreed that a committee be constituted for the commissioning of the mocks. The meeting called for need to intensify prayers for lasting peace to prevail in the state and people to be extra vigilant. In Medugri, Yagum Subukar, NTA News. Still on security matters, in a bid to enhance service delivery in host communities, a 10-day capacity building training for the vision and police officers, inspectors, as well as other rank and file of the Nigeria police force has ended in Medugri, the Bruno state capital. Again, Yagum Subukar has the reports. With the theme, democratic policing and response to issues of drugs and sexual violence in IDP camps, the training is aimed at reinforcing the capacity of the Nigerian police as a law enforcement institution in line with international best practices. About 137 officers from across the ranks drawn from Bakasi IDP camp, Dalori 1 and 2 IDP camps participated in the training. Commissioner of Police Damien Chuku, while congratulating the participants, says in an effort to attend to the security needs of IDPs, a monitoring committee will be constituted by the Inspector General of Police Ibrahim Idris to check made activities of personnel at the IDP camps. I have been greatly enriched and better equipped in the literary skills, skills and knowledge to respond professionally to issues of drugs and social violence, not only at IDP camps, but also in the discharge of your concerned responsibilities. Workshop coordinator David Ogunle, among other resource persons, informed that the program is meant to bridge the gap between the police and the host community, hence the need to use the knowledge gained. The 10-day workshop was organized by the Nigeria Policing Program under the Security and Justice Reform Program, sponsored by United Kingdom Government's Conflict, Stability and Security Fund. In Medjugorje, Yagum Subukaru, NTA News. And that's a wrap from Medugri. It's back to Joseph in Abuja. Thank you, Lami. Uh, a bit on security now. The top-ranking officers of the Nigerian police force are being charged with additional responsibilities to consolidate on the gains of the force in crime fighting and prevention. At a conference held with senior police officers in Abuja, the Inspector General of Police, Ibrahim Idris, emphasized on supervision of the middle and lower ranking officers and adherence to the rule of law to promote professionalism among the rank and file. Reading the riot ask, if you ask me, Runke Kolawile reports. Terrorism, kidnapping and other forms of crime are global challenges and the Nigerian police cannot afford to be caught napping to this end. The force is looking to the area of collaboration with traditional and religious leaders, civil society groups and other relevant groups in the society to enhance community policing strategies in the fight against crime. So basically it's about uh, how they go about it the methodology they will adopt uh, in carrying out this assignment. If they relate well with uh, the stakeholders, they will achieve uh, success. Exactly what happened in Lagos. When Akimumi came to the chiefs and Obad and kings, when he held meeting with them, he told them that they should handle this uh, Bado people traditionally. With the response from these Nigerians, the police can be said to be on the right track. Visibility policing is one of the best approach. In any city, seeing policemen you know, detract or prevent anybody that has some of these plans 
to intimidate or harass some innocent citizens. IGP Ibrahim Idris appreciates the officers and men for their dedication and sacrifice to address crime and expressed optimism that new post is among the officers with checkmate illegal duties leading to acts like extortion and harassment of Nigerians and other misbehavior resulting in public complaints. I have calls last year to address our mobile police commanders and I stated very clearly that all deployments that occur outside this administration is null and void. Every deployment, they have to revalidate it. Checks ranging from about 3.5 million naira to more than 1 million naira were presented to 233 family members of some policemen who died in active service. Also at the conference, the virtue of patience was rewarded as Bola Jifa Fuwora, who had a 14-year disciplinary action resolved in his favor, was elevated from SP to DCP. In Abuja, Ronke Kolawole, NT News. Trafficking in persons report from 2013 to 2017 shows that over 4,000 victims of the human trafficking have been rescued by the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, NAPTIP. This report was presented at the 22nd National Stakeholders Consultative Forum in Abuja. Gabriel Ludo brings us details. Records of rescued victims by state of origin indicate a dose state on the lead with 923, followed by Delta State with 395, and the Federal Capital Territory with the least number of victims. Well, the emerging trends of trafficking is organ transplantation, organ harvesting, so to speak, you know. They sell organs of, of humans now these days, so it's, it's gone beyond the prostitution thing now. Now they just deal with, because they think it's, it's, it's easier to make more money. Since it is a national stakeholders consultative forum, strategic partners say they are up to speed in the fight against trafficking in persons. And I'm looking forward to see the progress of NACCHIP and Nigeria's uh, fight against trafficking in persons. Uh, we have the juveniles in both towns. We have the female in the prisons too. And it goes across the sector. And most times the society will do not remember that part of the society. We man the roads. And so in one way by which we actually carry out that uh, mandate is to patrol the road. In the process of doing this, of course, we come across the traffickers. The total number of cases rescued from 2013 to June 2017 stood at 2,648. Cases investigated, 1,108. Suspected traffickers arrested 1,722 and a total number of convictions 161. The 22nd National Stakeholders Consultative Forum is a platform where major stakeholders galvanize ideas, review strategies and new relationships with development partners to ensure that the menace of trafficking is brought to the barest minimum. In Abuja, Gabriel Odu, NTN News. Over now to Uche Nwizu for highlights of stories trending on the foreign scene. Hello and welcome. The United Nations has named three human rights experts to lead an international investigation into killings and other crimes in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Government of Congo, however, insisted its justice system will be in charge of the inquiry and the United Nations will provide technical support. The U.S. House of Representatives voted for new sanctions against Iran, Russia and North Korea and insisted President Donald Trump obtains lawmakers' permission before easing any of the sanctions on Moscow. The sanctions bill came at the heel of lawmakers' investigation into possible meddling by Russia in the 2016 presidential elections. Meanwhile, Iran said it will take actions if the U.S. government passes the new sanctions, while Russia vows to take retaliatory measures of its own. 
The European Union top court has ruled that Palestinian Islamist movement Hamas should remain on the EU terrorism blacklist. It referred the case back to a lower court. In a similar development, the court also said that a law requiring refugees to seek asylum in the first country they reach applies even to exceptional circumstances. This case, filed by Austria and Slovakia, might affect several people who arrived during the migrant crisis of 2015 to 2016. As part of strategies to tackle air pollution in the UK, the government of Britain plans to ban new diesel and petrol cars and vans from 2040. Minister of Environment Michael Gove said government would provide £200 million to local authorities for the schemes to restrict emissions from diesel vehicles. The government hopes to publish its clean air program, which favors electric cars. That does it from this segment. I am Uchi Nguizu. The rest of the news continues shortly. Let's bring you up to date on sports as well. 25 Nigeria home-based Super Eagles camping in Kanu ahead of a qualifier against Benin Republic as NCC Tennis League continues Thursday in Lagos. Amazi Marcus reports. Head coach of the home-based Super Eagles, Salisu Yusuf, says the players are in 